If you had Lyles, Tobogo, and Zarno Hughes as your one, two, three in that order, you're probably lying. Now, I, mean, I know there's probably a couple people who had that out there, but this was very much a surprise, I think, to a lot of people, especially considering what we had seen progressing through the rounds. Now, Noah Lyles pulled off the 100 meter gold medal, 9.83 seconds, improving on his personal best from what, back in 2019. I don't think many people expected this result. Um, Lyles was definitely in the mix, but I think a lot of people were like, oh, his start is a little too slow, right? He's not gonna be able to, listen, Lyles showed up and showed out in his 100 meters. Uh... To be honest, the goal was to make sure that I was the first to 60. After that, just do no loss things. Walk people down, use my top end speed. And I just believe that when I got out there, I was the fastest guy. I just keep believing that until I cross the line. And he pulled off the win relatively comfortably. If you're talking about 9.83 seconds, where Tobogo was second in 9.88. And what's crazy is Tobogo, 9.88. Zarno Hughes, 9.88. Seville, 9.88. Two through four were all the same time, separated by thousands of a second. This was an amazing race across the board for the second night of the World Championships here in Budapest. Again, Noah Lyles really showed up and proved that he's here to stay, right? If we're talking about him winning the 100, that 200 might go crazy. Y'all know that Lyles gets hype off of the energy. He gets hype off of people saying he can't do things. He might go crazy in that 200. 9.83 seconds, again, an amazing performance for Noah Lyles to take the win here. Like I said, very comfortably. He won by, what, five hundredths of a second? That's a good margin when we're talking about the 100 meter dash. But also shout out to, let's see, the Bogo getting that second place, that silver medal. This is one of the most humble athletes that we've ever seen in the sport. He literally said that he wishes he could have given Akani Simbine his own spot in the final if he had the chance to, right? Akani Simbine, he unfortunately false started in his semifinal and wasn't able to progress through the rounds, but Tobogo said he would give up his spot and he actually said he's dedicating his medal to Akani Simbine. It really shows that the continent has a lot of potential you know, looking at the likes of Ferdinand and Akani. For me, I, would re I really wanted them to have this medal before me, but by the grace of God, I got it first. And um, so that I can come up knowing that, you know, I have two African brothers who got this medal and they really motivate me going forward. Mm. For Akani, I'm really sad that he didn't make it to the final because I really wanted him to be there. Even I could move that space for him, let wow. him do that for me. because. They have been doing this for a long time, you know, and they really deserve this, the medals. He is very much one who's kind of leading the pack in terms of the next generation of African sprinters. Though Simbine, though Omanyala, they're still there, they're still competing, but Tobogo very much is the future, and this performance proves it. Now, third place, I will gladly admit that I was wrong. I did not see him getting on the podium. I thought that his previous championship performances were, you know, indicating that, you know, this was not gonna show up for him, but Zarno Hughes showed up third place, 9.88 seconds, his first championship medal in an individual event in the 100 meter dash here. He's been here since 2015, and this is his first championship medal. He spoke about how much this meant to him and how long this journey has been to get to this point. It's self-belief. Um, you know, over the years we've been working and um, the speed has always been there for me, but for me it was more of a mindset thing. I, I used to doubt myself a little bit, and I really wanted to achieve things, and sometimes my imagination would run a, a little bit too well. So for me, um, my coach sat down with me at back in the background season, you know, and he had seminars with all of us, all of us from Racist Track Club, and he, he made us understand the power of self belief. And you know, for me, I, I set up goals that I wanted to achieve this year, and it's the work, it's self belief. You know, I believe I can do this, and anything you put your mind to, you can achieve it. And um, my mind believed it, and um, I just needed to go there and do it. Again, this is really, really tough because Oblique Seville had been progressing amazingly through the rounds. He ran 9.86 seconds in his heat, then he ran 9.90 seconds in his semifinal. He looked comfortable, and he told us that he didn't even expect to run that fast. He didn't feel like he was running that fast, but unfortunately, fourth place by the barest of margins, right? Thousands of a second, another fourth place here at the World Championships. But I think Seville still has a lot more to go. I think he's still 
still young. He still has a lot of progression. But like I told y'all yesterday, don't get too crazy with the heats, right? It's not in a perfect indicator of what's to come. We got to make sure we look through the rounds. I did think Seville was going to have a good shot after the semifinal, but wasn't able to put it together for that final. But again, look at it. The very close margins, but no allows. Gold medal, 9.83 seconds. This is an amazing performance for him. I really think in that 200, times are times are dangerous. His American record might not be lasting the rest of this week. Last year made this the right year. After having such a stronghold on the 200, it really freed me up to be like, okay, no matter where I am in the season, I know I can always come back to the 200 and it's gonna be fast. So now it's only a matter of time of continuously working on the 100, you know, the worst part of my race and getting it faster because no longer is running more 200s really gonna help me. It's now about running faster 100s. That's gonna make the first 100 of the 200 a faster time. Let me know what you think is going to happen when we get to the 200. Could we even see this exact same podium, right? Uh, you Lyles, Tobogo, and Zarno Hughes. Now, of course, we have Arian Knighton, we have Kenny Benaric. They're going to be coming back with fresh legs, but I think these three guys are going to be very motivated. We're, we're going to see what happens, but Fred Curley, I didn't even talk about Fred Curley and how he didn't even make the final, which was crazy. He was actually the first person out of the final. It was just tragic feeling. So, hey, I'm a competitor, so they were the better man on his deck. But, hey, I'm ready for any challenge. So you just haven't really been yourself this year. What's, is there anything that's been going on with you that outside of track? Nah, you know, I was keep my personal life personal. Okay. And track's still track, man. It's yeah. sports, so it's part of the game. Yeah. So I can't complain. So where do, where do you go from here? Hey, I'm, hey you know me. I'm, I'm a champion. Yeah. So I went to China, and now I want to finish my season. And I want to be coming next year. But that's the 100 meter dash. Let's move over to the hurdles where this was wild. Rashid Broadbell. Now, he was very much one of the favorites along with Grant Holloway. They were probably co favorites. I, of course, picked Grant Holloway for the gold medal, but Broadbell, he unfortunately crashed out in the heats of the 110 meter hurdles. This was devastating. At that same time, I was actually speaking with Hansel Parchment. I was interviewing Hansel Parchment. He qualified through the rounds and he literally witnessed Rashid Broadbell crash to the track, hitting a hurdle in his heat. All right, Hansel. So this isn't new for you. You've been here so many different times, going through to the next round. What's the experience like this time in Budapest? I would say uh, not so different from the others, you know? The crowd is great. The atmosphere is great. Oh my god! Oh my god. Wait, who was that? Ah! So unfortunately, we're not going to get the matchup that we've all been waiting for between Grant Holloway, between Hansel Parchment, Rasheed Broadbell, Daniel Roberts, right? All these guys are not going to be together because Rasheed Broadbell is not there. Really devastating, but we do have all the rest of the guys kind of going through. Cordell Tinch, he's also going through. He hit a lot of hurdles, but he said that he's kind of getting used to, you know, traveling overseas and being in a new environment. So we're going to see how things progress. I'm still picking Grant Holloway for, as a favorite. Look out for Hansel Parchment. Daniel Roberts made his first semifinal at a global championships ever, which is a huge performance, but we're going to see what happens as we go through the rounds. Now, we also did see the heats of the women's 100 meter dash. This is again, a very, very stacked field between Shelly Ann, Sharika, Shakari, Julian Alfred, Marie Jose Talou, Dean Asher Smith, right? Everyone is in this field. And there were a couple ladies who looked very, very comfortable. I'm really looking at Sharika Jackson, Talou, and Shakari Richardson. Shelly Ann did look good as well, but I think in one of the post-race interviews, she didn't seem as confident, but I'm not reading too much into that, right? Again, just like I said for the men's, this is just the heats, but I do like how some of these women did look right we're gonna see them tomorrow when they get to the semifinals, and then of course the final i'm still sticking with my picks right sharika for gold talu for silver and then shakari for the bronze medal we're gonna see what happens though shelly ann is definitely gonna be in that mix julian alfred in that mix dinasha smith in that mix all the women right they qualified through very very comfortably there were no shockers so definitely look out for what's happening in that women's 100 meter dash when we get to tomorrow but let's also talk about the women's 400 meter dash Marla Dupolino is going to win the gold medal by a large margin, in my opinion. 49.90 seconds, and she looked super comfortable. This is why I told y'all, even before, right, the world championships, before, you know, she finished third place or whatever it was um, in Poland, right, Cindy McLaughlin Lavroni had, you know, run 48.74. I still thought Paulino was the slight edge. Of course, we're never going to know what's going to happen with that race, but Paulino, 49.90 seconds, looking very comfortable. I think she's going to improve her personal best, the 48. 98 seconds and I think she's going to get to at least 48 mid if not 49.90.
48 low, who knows? But we're gonna see what happens. Sally Nasser, she of course didn't run, right? Cindy McLaughlin Lavroni, she of course pulled out. So we're not gonna see some of the other women who are in the 48 second range. But behind Paulino, Natalia Kazmarek from Poland, 50.02 seconds. She was really running well. She looked comfortable as well. She could be a silver medalist or a bronze medalist. I like the way that she's looking. And again, with the field kind of dropping out, which we'll talk about in a second, Kazmarek is really gonna have the opportunity to get on that podium. I do wanna talk about Sade Williams. Now, she only ran 50.78 seconds, but from lane nine, she was cruising, looking comfortable. And she's been speaking about the confidence that she's had coming in and how this is her time, right? She already got the bronze medal last year. This might be the time for Sade Williams to again get on the podium. In that heat though, we did see Shawnee miller Weibo. Now, she didn't run fast. She only ran like 52 seconds, but she is absolutely amazing. What, in late April or mid-April, she gave birth to her child. She's a new mother. She competed in a heptathlon, which she said she did off of a whim because uh, her sister was gonna compete in it alone, so she wanted to join. What was that experience like? You know what, my little sister, she uh, she did it at trials, and I said, I'll jump in with you. It was my sister. She she wanted to do it, and she needed someone else to go with her because um, it was just gonna be her by herself, and so I was like, I'll jump in with you and go with you and see how that goes. Uh, but I had so much fun doing it. Uh, when we got to the 800, I was like, you're on your own <laughs> with that. But yeah, no, it's just been fun just to be back out there and competing with my little sister. The first time competing with her, and so yeah, it was just a blessing. Yeah, I definitely want to give it one full year, and so maybe in the 2026, uh, we're gonna give it one full year and just give it a go and see how it goes. She just said that she's getting ready for Paris. Now, she did say she's still deciding on what event she wants to do in Paris, but it's either gonna be the 400 or the 200. She said that heptathlon was way too hard, but she is getting pushed in the direction of doing the 400 because, you know, she wants to, or people are saying that she probably wants to make some history here in terms of a three-time Olympic gold medalist or a three-time medalist in general in terms of the 400 meters. I mean, you kind of hinted, I think, you're not sure, maybe Olympics going for three, maybe, maybe not. You know what? Everyone's been hounding me about it. <laughs> ever since I announced it, and they were like, "No one's ever done three before." And we'll see. We'll see how things go. We're gonna we're gonna get, get into training next year, and um, it's gonna be between the two and the four. So keep your hopes up, everybody. But. Shawnee miller Weibo, she is a legend. I think that based on her coming back so soon, she is very likely gonna be in the medal hunt when we're talking about Paris next year. Do not doubt her. But huge, huge story, of course, is Britton Wilson. Now, she was injured after NCAAs when she did that double, but she did make the team at USA. She ran uh, 49.8 seconds or 49.7, I forget exactly, but finished second place. Here, though, she unfortunately faltered. She, injured, she was injured, you know? It's really, really disappointing. She was uh, taken out on a wheelchair. You know, she was injured. This wasn't her time, unfortunately. So that takes another major player out of the 400 meter dash. Britton Wilson was definitely one who's gonna be in the mix, especially considering all the other women who dropped out. So what does this mean for the 400? Well, Marley Dupolino, I think she is still the clear gold medalist, but then you have Kazmarek. Then you also have Claver. She may be a little bit tired, I don't know, with that after the four x four, both those rounds, but she's definitely in the mix. Candice McLeod, she also looked very good, right? Like I said, Shade Williams, Rashida Adeleke, right? She is very much in the mix as well. So a lot of women are still in this 400 meter dash, and I think behind Paulino, anyone can medal anyone can medal. This is an open field. Definitely look out for that women's 400 meter dash. Now on the men's 400 meter dash, Steven Gardner, Wade Van Niekerk, they look comfortable. They look clear. Again, I think they are the clear favorites. Steven Gardner for gold, Wade Van Niekerk for silver. It could be closer than we think, right? I mean, this is just the heat, so it's hard to read too much into it, but they look very, very comfortable. You did have, of course, the Norwegian athlete. He set a national record, 44.39. You know, amazing performance. I just don't think that he's going to be able to step things up and remain consistent through the rounds, but Wade Van Niekerk, Steven Gardner, I think they're really good. Back Matthew Hudson-Smith, he's been injured for a lot of the season. I think he also looked very, very good. Bayapundori, right? Um, Vernon Norwood was in the mix. Um, Quincy Hall from the US, right? Um, unfortunately, Bryce Deadman, he didn't qualify. Really disappointing. Of course, I had him for bronze. You know, again, I gladly admit that I am wrong. He's not gonna be on the podium. I made my predictions wrong, but you know, disappointing to not see him there. A lot of guys, Karani James, he also made it through. Um, he's of course dealing with the death of his longtime coach, Harvey Glantz, um, but glad to see him here in the mix. But we're gonna see this men's 400 as it plays out over the next couple days. Also, 400 meter hurdles on the men's side. I mean, nothing too much to talk about this. Everyone made it through. Carson Warholm, Alessandro Santos, Rai Benjamin, I mean, CJ Allen, Trevor Bassett, uh, Hapio. Everyone made it through in the 400 meter hurdles. Not too much going on on that front. So really looking forward to seeing, you know, as the rounds progress. Again, Carson Warholm, Rai Benjamin, uh, Alessandro Santos. I still have them as my top three. Kyron McMaster made it through, of course, as well. I think McMaster, he might be a, a problem. So look out for them, but that's the 400 meter hurdles. We're gonna see what happens as they progress. We gotta talk 
about the women's long jump. Now, this was a pretty wide open field in terms of the women who were competing, but Ivana Vuleta shut things down. She actually shut things down pretty early on with 7.05 meters on her second attempt, but then on her fifth attempt, world lead 7.14 meters. Huge performance for her to get the gold medal. I think this is her first world championship gold medal, and I think she had won two bronzes prior to this. So Vuleta, a, a veteran here, right? A veteran at this game, at the long jump. She is a mainstay here, and you know, no matter what the ups and downs and all that, she showed that she is a gold medalist, and she proved that tonight. Tara Davis Woodhall, silver medal, jumping 6.91 meters. A huge performance for her. She made it to the Olympics and competed there. Unfortunately, didn't make it to the, uh, onto the podium. Didn't make it to the team team for the Eugene World Championships, made it onto the team here, and now finally got onto the podium. So Tara Davis, huge shout out to Tara Davis Woodhall and her amazing performance. And then third place, Alina Rotaru Kotman. She managed to get the bronze medal, I think on her final jump in 6.88 meters. She just edged out Ese Brume, who jumped 6.84 meters. So amazing performance for Rotaru Kotman, right? This was a really great long jump competition. I, I had Yapuchino coming in as probably the favorite considering her consistency throughout the year, but she unfortunately only finished in fifth place, unable to get on the podium. Again, Ese Brume fourth place, but really, really great performances in that that women's long jump so that's day two those are some of the performances let me know of course what was your favorite performance from day two of the championships you're probably going to say the hundred i probably know it right do you think that no allows is going to be able to get the double and do you think that we're going to see the same podium in the 100 meters over to the 200 between noah tobogo and zarnell hughes right let me know what you think also let me know if you had this as your top three noah let's see tobogo as well as zarnell hughes again i will gladly admit i did not have this as my top three the only person i had on my top three who made it to the uh, uh, podium was letting the bogo and he got silver instead of the bronze i thought he would if you kind of listen to all our stories there's a lot of belief there's a lot of you know self affirmation coming from all of us whether you're as young as you are or you know told you're not a hundred guy or you know told us somebody who's probably got to this point and, and had you know shortcomings but believing that it's going to come out and I know there's tons of kids who ask me every day, but here are three people who truly believe in themselves that is proof that if you truly believe in what your dreams are and what you accomplish, it's gonna come true. You're bound to move closer to it. So shout out to all the guys, Lyles, Tobogo, and Hughes. We're, you know, they definitely deserve a lot of kudos. And then we're gonna see what happens when we get to that women's 100 meter dash final tomorrow. I mean, did you check out the semifinal for the second semifinal for the women's 100 meters? Sharika Jackson, Marizo Zetalu, and Shakira Richardson are all in the same semifinal. Tomorrow's gonna be crazy, but thanks for watching.